Hello! Welcome to my channel. My name is Mildly Gothic. If you're new here, what I like to do is a lot of different artsy stuff. Uh, before you make that comment, yes, I am filming this intro directly after the other one because next week is Thanksgiving and I will be traveling and I don't have the time to film the, <laughs> this another time. So I'm filming it uh, right now. But I've got some other stuff on the table in front of me because today what we are doing is basket weaving. I have referenced it a few times. Um, in my little spiel of an intro and I really enjoy this the baskets I'll go through these a little bit more This will be a little bit of a longer intro because I really want to go through these baskets um, Basket weaving is something I started as a Girl Scout and then my mom and I discovered well actually my mom discovered a company That sells basket kits. I doubt it's not the only one out there uh, But this is just one that she found I don't I think it might have been from a recommendation and So she and I have a history now of basket weaving together um <laughs> So this is the first basket we made together outside of, I don't have the two that I made as a Girl Scout, but this is the apple basket. I use it to hold all my Sharpies and stuff. This one is a circle bottom basket. Um, my mom and I had a rule as we were going through these basket kits and each one we were gonna do something different. So then the next basket that we made, I think was this one. This one holds all my Rubik's cubes and playing cards. But this one is a woven base basket. I can't really, there we go. It's a woven base um, and it has these side handles. So this one has an overall strap handle and then this one has these side handles. So that was the different thing about this one and also the woven base. Um, and then there is a basket that I made while I was home with my mom for Christmas two years ago and I will insert my favorite picture of me making that basket somewhere. Uh, my mom was taking pictures as I go through and as I was working on it and there's just one that's really funny to me. But then um, she sent me a few basket kits cause moved out for college and all that. So she sent them to me. And this is one that I made when she did that. Um, so these two were pretty true to the kits, not exactly. This is called the harvest time centerpiece and that's supposed to have like orange and brown. Um, but my mother is wonderful and sent me a bag, sent me a bag of multicolored reeds. And so I got to swap out whatever colors. This one is different because this one has a wooden base. And so round, a lot of fun. This is a really neat detail on the side. I'm super happy with how that, this basket came out. The most recent basket I have made until now is this one. Um, this one is actually relatively true to design, I think. I don't remember if it was supposed to have colors or not, but I gave it colors. The other thing about this one, if you'll see, I've stained the bottom and I put a decal in the center because I thought that was super cute. So I might do that to this one as well. Um, but so I have access to a workshop that makes vinyl stencils because I have two jobs. Um, one of them is I work as a workshop instructor for a studio called Hammer and Stain. It's a franchise. I work for the local um, I work for the local one and it's a lot of fun and the owner is very very kind and lets me have access to the supply sometimes and so I stained the base to try to match the handles and then I found this really cool floral thing that I put in the center to just give it a little bit more character. That one has been a little beaten up but I enjoy basket weaving. I've got a variety of different kinds. Um, unfortunately I was never able to get underwater basket weaving into my schedule but you know, maybe one day as I bonk the table. But I am making a very large basket today. I don't know if it's the largest basket I've ever made. I think the one that I showed a picture of is bigger, if not the same size. But it's another kit that my mom sent me that I have edited the colors and stuff in and aren't really gonna follow the pattern because once you start swapping out rows and colors and things, you, it gets hard. Um, I actually was working on the basket earlier today. My fingers are raw. It's not done yet, but it will be by the time this video goes up. So um, to talk about the process, walk through that, I'm probably gonna speed through and cut out a lot of it because it's just painful, but I relent. I really enjoy this. This is something that's a lot of fun to me and I'm doing it as my Thanksgiving week video because it's homey to me. I was doing it with my mom, so there's a lot of love in basket weaving for me. I mean, cornucopia, you got your other wicker baskets. So there's a lot of reasons why I thought this was a good video to put out. So shout out to my mom, lots of love. Um, by the time this video is up, we're, you know, eating food. You're, you've gotten to meet Domino. Maybe I'll make a 
vlog style thing of my parents and Domino, if that would be cute. But enough rambly aside, basket weaving is full of a lot of love and heart for me. And so I am sharing it. Happy Thanksgiving, even though it's yesterday, technically. But with all that said, let me show you the very long creation of the basket. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you want, feed the algorithm, like, subscribe, all that. Wow, I'm gonna have to cut this intro up. It's fine. Uh, thank you for making it this far. I apologize for all my rambles and uh, let's get to it. So I just wanted to show you how everything comes packaged. It often comes in these large spools tied together somehow, and you do have to figure out the measurements and what's going to be used for what purpose. This thick spool is going to be the main structure of the basket, the, the struts. Um, once you cut everything to size, I like to do this first, um, then I soak it in the hot water. Once everything's been cut to size and soaked, uh, for a little bit, not necessarily a super long time, but just to be pliable, then you can start trying to lay it out. So when you see me bending it in half, what I'm doing is looking for the right and the wrong side. This is the most important thing in basket weaving. The right side is going to be smooth when you roll it over your fingers. You won't see any little hairs or anything stick up. When you roll the wrong side on the outside, you'll see all these hairs and fibers stick up. That's what you want on the inside of the basket. You want the right side facing out. So I typically check every read before a row or before doing anything. It is beneficial to mark the center on almost all of your pieces because you are trying to center it not just vertically, but horizontally. That way you don't end up with super uneven verticals and then your weaving will be cut short no matter what height you want the basket to obtain because you did not center it properly. The thinner, shorter reads are what's called spacers. Typically the short sides of a basket can actually suffer from being woven too tightly and you don't have enough space to get your weavers, the rows of the basket through. So what those spacers allow is you can get the basket very, very tight, but when you upset the spokes and you make them vertical, you actually still have enough space to weave something back and forth between them. This is incredibly important. And if not done, it one, you'll end up with a looser basket base and two, it makes the sides a lot more difficult to weave if you make it super, super tight. So typically if you don't do spacer reads, you then will weave a looser base to allow for the weavers. So it was kind of at this point that I realized something was wrong. I had the dimensions of what the base was supposed to be, so I kept measuring it and I realized I used too thick of pieces for my spacers. And so I had to pull them all out and redo with the actual spacers. Instead of what was supposed to be the spacers, I used what were supposed to be my weavers. So my row reads instead of my spacer and lashing reads. This took up some time, but at least I caught it early enough that I was able to fix it and did not cause serious detriment to the project. I tried to remove a lot of the repetitive footage, but the unfortunate truth is uh, a lot of basket weaving is very repetitive. You add a new row, you try to tighten down the previous rows, and then you try to tighten down the one you just made based on the space you have now acquired from tightening the previous rows. A lot of shuffling, a lot of back and forth, um, but such is if you want a very tight weave and a beautiful finished basket. So here's the final bit of the base that I forgot to film. It's called twining. It's just a very thin cord. I typically fold it in half, start around one reed, and then you just go back and forth across the entire base. Now we get to the process called upsetting the spokes. And if your reeds are not still damp like mine were, you want to be sure to apply a damp paper towel or cloth at the base to ensure that you are not going to break any of them. I typically pick a side to start with and attach those opposite sides to each other in various segments and then use those groupings to attach the other sides or if it's a circle you just have to kind of work out the geometry it will end up looking kind of like a weird onion and you want to keep doing and undoing these groupings as you're weaving your first base row if you don't your basket will start going outwards and you want it to go as upwards as it immediately can this is where being consistent in your tightness really matters because if you're too tight or too loose, it will do some funky things to the edges and corners of your basket. I went a little too tight in my second and third rows and so my corners have a little bit of a divot in them, 
but I loosened it out as I went up so it didn't end up being too much of a problem, but consistency is really key. Something you'll notice that I do is I don't ever start one row I don't ever start two rows in the same place, and there's a reason for this. If you always start your rows in the same place, your basket will develop a weird kind of bulge and your starting and stopping point will be very obvious. So I vary where I do this across the basket. And the way you start, I typically start with a segment that will be on the inside of the basket. So it covers over the front of one thing and under the one next to it. Then when I finish, I will go behind and then tuck it under. It's hard to explain, but you end up with an overlap of the pieces where the ends are not visible from the inside or the outside of the basket. I added a diagram to try to help explain what's going on a little bit more, and hopefully that clears it up. It does not matter which side of this diagram is the inside or outside of the basket, as it will hide the ends of the weaver either way. As you add the next couple rows, you will start to not need the clothespins anymore and the weaving will move the spokes straight just under its own tension. But the first few rows are the most vital and it's very hard to get this tension right. With this basket supposed to be such a square and structured basket, I did keep using the clothespins throughout several more rows just to ensure that I was going to get the straightest sides possible and to avoid outward bowing. So there is a good bit of footage cut out due to it was just me compressing the rows down, which took a substantial amount of time. Adding the color is really no different than adding any other row. You just need to plan what you want your order of colors to be. Whether you want the center of the basket to have the color on the outside or the inside, that's the main thing that matters is just thinking about it in the big picture of the project, what you want the color to be. Uh, I decided to do alternating green and brown because I did not have enough green to do it all and I thought it looked nice and kept it in a similar theme with the leather handles that you will eventually see get added. So at this point with the color, I am already veering from the pattern. There were supposed to be at least nine if not more rows before I hit the first color. I think I did five. Um, and so my basket is likely not the height of the final product. But this is where you can take some liberty as long as you stay true to the general structure of the basket and have the reeds to finish whatever you want your completed pro project to look like, there is actually quite a bit of wiggle room in what you choose to do. The other thing is, so when thinking about doing multiple strips of color, do you want them to be have the same appearance. I chose to line up the doubled segments of my green and brown so that they would be on the same spokes instead of alternating spokes. Had I done one more row in the middle, it would have been the opposite. So things like that is when it comes to modifying the pattern. I apologize for Domino making some jingles. But things like that is what you need to keep in mind when you get to the point of wanting to modify these patterns for yourself is the overall look and structure of the layering of the rows. And even when modifying a pattern, paying attention to it is very important. Um, I did not pay enough attention to the pattern and did not notice that there were these vertical spokes that were supposed to have been inserted several rows earlier than the rows I was currently on. So I decided to remove some of the top rows uh, in order to have an easier time inserting these spokes. Uh, because that would also then put me at the right position to attach my handles. So, while modifying a pattern is all well and good, read the instructions, you know the old adage, uh, measure twice, cut once, applies here as well, but it's read twice, cut once, so that you don't have to cut your read multiple times. These reeds were also a nightmare to get in. I ended up using a zip tie to go under the rows that I needed to put the reeds through, and using that to pull out the reed while I shoved the support through. I did not include the footage to do all of that because it took me a very, very, very long time. And here's the wonderful final product after getting all of those supports in place. Adding the handles wasn't too much different than anything else. They just slipped onto two of the vertical spokes and I added an extra support behind them as per the instructions. 
the weaver for this row was the five eighths, I believe, uh, flat flat, the one that was the same reed that was used for the spokes, just because it more closely matched the width of the handles and will avoid too much compression or weirdness in the pattern. And after the handles, I decided only to weave about three more rows, even though the pattern called for several more. And with that, I decided I was done. So the way that you finish off any basket is you want to actually cut the reed if it finished on the inside of the basket. It will not be visible, and so you can just simply cut these off. Once those are done, you want to go to the other reeds, and this depends on the size of your basket, but you want to leave yourself a good bit and then cut them off at an angle. And you absolutely will need a wet paper towel at this point because the reeds will be very stiff. You want to take them and you want to bend them in half and tuck them under the third row of weaving. This will secure them in place and ensure that your top row of weaving is going absolutely nowhere. It is a little bit of a tedious process because you want to make sure the reed is wet enough that it can bend with no problem so that you do not break the reed. It's more of a structural thing than an aesthetic thing. You just don't want to impart any unnecessary structural issues. So this basket has straight supports instead of just an inner rim, um, but if either way it does not matter, you just secure it in place. I tend to use clothespins. Um, the tension required for this one did mean I switched to using zip ties as I could actually pull them tight and get a more secure fit, uh, but you just want to line everything up and when you are using rims and not something straight like this, like you'll see me do for the outer rim, leave yourself a significant extra. You, It is really hard to predict how the reed and the basket is going to move as you start adding the lashing. And so in order to ensure you do not end up with a gap, give yourself some extra rim so that everything can be flush and snug and you can cut it when you're ready. So to start the lashing, I typically pass it from the outside to the inside of the basket and then secure that piece on the inside. You want to make sure, especially with your lashing, that you have your right side facing out. And then simply pass it around your rim in loops, catching only the top row of the basket, and you want to secure it in place. It can be a little finicky if your spokes got a little tight together, but patience and occasionally a little bit of force should get it through. You also want to make sure that you have your seagrass on the inside and you secure it as you go along. It is very hard to add it after the fact. Yes, you could cut your lashing into multiple pieces rather than dealing with the one large strand. However, I like to have as few start and stops as possible when doing my lashing, so I choose to suffer through using the entire reed at once. And after all of that time and trouble, here's the final product. We're done! This has been a very long process. Um, I am like five days, several drinks, and some lost sanity from where I started. Um, I don't know why I decided doing the biggest basket kit I own was the best idea. I don't know. I am planning on using it to store my yarn. I think it's supposed to be a shelf organizer, and I think yarn will go quite nicely. We are going to pretend that this bit didn't happen. Um, the lashing, I've probably explained in the voiceover, but the lashing is very finicky and it can be very difficult. Um, this was done with a flat flat instead of a flat oval, meaning it's very hard to tell of uh, the right and the wrong side, and this is, it got twisted in the wrong side and ended up on the top. As you can see, it ended up with right side on the rest of it. I had a lot of fun. This is not the final size or intention of the basket pattern as it was purchased, because I don't follow instructions. Oh, there's a bit of seagrass still in here. Uh, I have a history of just kind of turning the patterns into whatever I want. The pattern did have some vertical pieces of color, but since I started, this color earlier. I'm not sure if I'll really work that in. I've got some green and brown, so I didn't at this point. Um, but you know, I might. 
but I'm really happy with it. I think it's very cute. I think it will serve the purpose that I want for it. It is the first basket I've done that has these support beams on the inside that actually force it into a square shape. That was interesting to work with. Uh, put a lot more strain on things. Um, I love these handles. I'm really happy with it. I think it came out super cute. And I apologize for the absolutely chaotic process that this was, but this video helped me figure out a even better way to film top down. I didn't realize I already have a mic stand and my phone holder that clips to my ring camera actually connects to, like I can clip that onto the mic stand as well. So that's what I've been using because then I can get much more angled and some more interesting shots. I have cleaned up my table from all of the debris as you saw accumulating throughout the video. So don't worry about that. It's been cleaned, vacuumed, all that. I had a lot of fun. This is not something that will show up very often, but it is something I enjoy doing and it's fitting for the time of year. So uh, with all that, I wish you a happy belated Thanksgiving if you are in the Americas celebrating Thanksgiving, or I guess in America celebrating Thanksgiving. And uh, I had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, if you liked it, like, subscribe, all that jazz, and stay tuned to see whatever I create next. And I will see you in the next one.